I'll admit, I was coming into this with a bias. If you saw my, if you saw my Prey trailer reaction, I wasn't, it, uh, I wasn't exactly confident or excited for this movie. My concerns confirmed <laughs> to prove that didn't make any sense at all. That was just really saying, see, that no, line was no, I would love to be wrong. Oh, okay. I, should I shouldn't be here. One reason. Yes, sister. But I didn't want to base my whole judgment off a one one to two minute cut of different clips. But when your trailer has the line, why do you want to hunt? Because you all think that I can't. I mean, we're definitely in for a ride. But I wanted to be fair and give the movie its fair shake. But I have to say, those thoughts were not disappointed even though I was in this movie because it's not good. It's not good. I am the reasonable normie. I like movies and TV shows and games and though I may not know much about the history of these different types of characters, nevertheless, I like to come into it with an open mind and try to just take away something good even though sometimes it may be more trouble than it's worth. Not knowing much about Predator, I've seen a few of the recent movies. Can't say that they were good, but they were entertaining, at least. I wanted to check out this Prey movie because powerful woman, right? The Predator's most deadly opponent happened to be a Native American woman. My issue is not with Naru, the hero of the story, being a woman. No, my issue is with the movie not doing a very good job to convince me that she was worthy of the title. There's a big conflict between duty and desire, something that's presented in a lot of these stories. What is your duty and is it more important than your desire. But really, nowadays, it seems like one's duty seems to be for themselves rather than for others. What greater fulfillment is there if not your own desires? Naru is stuck in a world where to be a woman is to perform womanly duties. But she's no ordinary woman. No, she's a hunter. Don't call her a huntress because she's just as good, if not better, than the men. She wants to hunt, but she can't because she was born with a vagina. And therefore, she should perform the duties of people with vaginas. But deep down, she is a strong, woman who's capable of taking down any beast that comes her way but yet every time we see her attempt to hunt she seems to fail her mom makes fun of her early in the movie because she almost caught a deer and her mom's like almost doesn't really cut it she goes after rabbits she can't catch them because apparently her axe needed a rope i guess she was taking too long to run after her axe and after she ties a rope to her axe it doesn't even have the decency to actually show us catching those rabbits no we we flip to a scene where she just has a essentially a backpack full of rabbits and she cooks them and she she's able to feast and so we kind of just see this progression throughout the movie she doesn't actually succeed in anything we're just told that she does but going back i always wonder is it not a sign of immaturity to desire your own pleasure at the expense of your duty to your tribe whether your tribe is your family your community the tight-knit group of people that you belong to and each person should pull their weight according to their strengths to lift up the tribe not to lift yourself up but to lift up those around you is it not a sign of immaturity to balk at that and say i don't care what you guys need i only care about coming out on top that's my issue with the premise. It continues the trope that don't want to actually answer these difficult questions. They just want to show us that she had it in her all along. It was just the men, the patriarchal mindset around her that was keeping her down. So when they end the story, she's exactly where she started. It's everyone around her that's different. It's everyone around her that's had the enlightenment. She always knew it, but we didn't. And I've never seen these types of stories actually flip the script on those types of characters, reveal them to actually be the antagonists, that it was their pursuit of self-fulfillment that held them down the whole time, not others. They never find fulfillment in serving others, only in proving them wrong. But we never actually see them at the end of their life when they realize that all of those efforts were in vain and as they die, they die with exactly what they came in this world with nothing no legacy no family no lessons imparted on others no just their own desires fulfilled and they go out into the next life just knowing that they did something and then they're forgotten and that's it men and women are built differently are there anomalies sure but the exceptions prove the rule so do we deny the tradition the history of what's been laid out for men and for women just to appease these people's feelings i would generally lean towards no it just sucks that to ask that question to ask 
where their feelings are coming from and seek to help them see that maybe they're the ones who are seeing things wrong. They're the ones who are failing to see the bigger picture. Somehow that makes us the bad guys. We're the bad guys for not believing in them all along. Believe all women, right? That worked well, didn't it? But you go through the movie and you see by the end of it, it was Taube her brother, that came to the realization that if it wasn't for Naru's efforts against the lion, he never would have actually succeeded in killing it and therefore being elevated to the war chief of the tribe. No, it was her. It was her that led him to victory. It was her mom who, though she wasn't completely against her hunting, she did kind of try to push Naru to understand a little bit of her responsibility. But by the end, she learned to accept her daughter was actually meant to be a warrior and celebrated along with the tribe as they all elevated Naru to the new war chief. Granted, it looked like all the men were dead except for the chief tribe who, let's face it probably doesn't actually run the tribe it's most likely his wife who does he's just the face of it you know behind every strong man is a strong woman who's actually the brains of the operation and that strong man is really just a weak man and he's only there to be the face of it that's that's how it works the colonizers who are much more advanced than the tribe they all die because they're all misogynist pigs Naru didn't do any learning. She just continued to get lucky. Her techniques stayed the same. I think the closest that she got was realizing that she needed to be a little bit faster in retrieving her axe. So she tied a rope to it. She's already a badass axe chucker when she did so. So it's not like she got better at it. But is she really that good if she keeps getting lucky? If we look at it with the lion going back to that scene, it happened to be that the sexist misogynist was spouting sexist misogynist language toward Naru and was distracted from the lion sneaking up on him and killed him. Then she just happened to trip when the lion was coming after her and upon tripping just happens to stab the lion, thus causing it to be weakened enough so that Tabe could kill it and claim the victory that was meant to be for her. How dare he? How dare he? With the bear, as it's charging for her, her dog decides to lead it away. And though admirable for the dog, what a coincidence. How, what luck that the bear, as he's about to chomp your face off, decides to turn around and just pursue different prey rather than the potential one who's just sitting in front of her. So that, that, that's just that. Then, after she distracts the bear away from her dog, happens to find a beaver dam and hide under it. Then, as the bear was getting closer and closer to killing her, gets killed by the predator. I'm not saying these conveniences are unbelievable, but don't tell me that you're the best of the best, yet these things keep happening to you. You're failing upwards. It's really how Hollywood is working nowadays. People just constantly fail up. Then, after she gets captured and ordered to be brought back to the tribe for a abandoning them. The predator attacks the tribe. The predator attacks the hunting group. They fight it. He kills them all. She happens to run long enough until she gets stuck into a trap and the predator, upon seeing her get stuck, decides she's no longer a threat and therefore not worthy to be killed. This is the same predator who, further into the movie, kills one of the colonizers, who's lost a leg by the way, has no weapon, and all he does is scream in pain and he gets killed. It doesn't make sense to me that he kills everything in its path, yet doesn't kill Nara when she's in a weakened state. But you know what? She may have been with that hunting party, but she wasn't a part of them. She wasn't a misogynist like they were. I got you, girl. I got you. Now, you can call me whatever you want, but my issues do not pertain to her being a woman, and nor does it pertain to her coming out on top. I think those stories can be done well. In fact, I love when they are. There's plenty of movies with female protagonists who succeed. One of my favorite shows growing up was Sailor Moon. So I am no stranger to enjoying stories with female heroes. But with Prey in particular, I just don't believe it. Especially don't believe that she had the physical prowess to best the Predator in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Again, it's not because she's a woman. Although, to be real, I, it's kind of hard to suspend disbelief in that regard. But the movie, prior to the climax, didn't do a good job of establishing that she had the capabilities to defeat this creature. The movie was about her failing into success while also single-handedly battling against the chauvinistic mentality inherent in her tribe and the world around her. She didn't learn from her brother. Her brother learns from her. She didn't observe any techniques from the Frenchman. Sure, one of them taught her how to shoot a gun, but I'm sure she could have figured it out on her own. She didn't gain any insight from those who have walked before her. We don't see, we don't get any flashbacks of her with, let's say, her father 
teaching her that just because she's a girl doesn't mean she can't be one of the boys and showing her some secret hunting techniques and her kind of bringing them back and using them to evolve her own techniques. And we don't even see her learning from those around her. She's better than them. She doesn't see anything her brother does or the hunting party does or the Frenchmen do or even the predator. She doesn't see what they do and use it to enhance her own skills. She had the answers from the beginning. It wasn't her with the problem. It was everyone else. We were the ones keeping her down. The cut Tamiya was about surviving, but for Naru, it was proving the pigs wrong. You know what? It was because she was a woman. There's a problem I have that I just don't think this world works the way the movie presents it. For example, when Naru pulls herself by the rope attached to her axe when she's stuck in the mud pit, to me doesn't seem like the rope was built for that kind of tension, but what do I know? And so it raises the question for me, do I believe her or do I suspend disbelief? Because if Naru's constantly telling us that she can hunt, she can do this, she can accomplish things, yet everything just seems to be so convenient for her. Is it really her accomplishing it or is it the movie giving her a handicap? By the time I got halfway through the movie, I realized I just didn't enjoy the general vibe. Everyone in this movie is a dick, except for her. The one who's the least one is her brother. At the hour and two minute mark, he repeats this line where I realized, not that I hadn't known before, but it really just sealed the deal on what the movie was trying to say. Your plan, the tree, you weaken it. You had it, Naru. You can see what I miss. You always have. I don't know that this thing can be killed. If it bleeds, we can kill it. And that's when I felt validated in my trailer reaction. Ah, if I'm going to be wrong, I'm going to Naru's flaw is her motivation, simply to prove others wrong. You never find happiness that way. You just live miserable. Even at her first attempt at her kutamiya, she doesn't take the lesson for her failure. It's not her who was wrong, it's everyone else around her. Things don't go well because of someone or some circumstance. When she slipped and fell from the tree as the lion was attacking her, it wasn't because she lost her footing, it's because she was so distracted by what that other guy was saying, she couldn't focus on killing that lion. Interesting that when she decides to actually go after the predator. The day after her brother is elevated to war chief, Naru keeps getting woken up abruptly. She looks over to her brother, just sleeping, implying that all the women have to go and do their dirty work while the men just get to sleep in, failing to remember that most of the men are per out pretty late doing work that all women aren't built to do. You see her walking against the flow at which the women were walking. And I thought, yes, queen. As the women go to their daily responsibilities, Naru walks in the opposite direction, signifying to the audience that she is no mere woman. She is the predator. And so there's that separation between duty and then your own desire. And her desire should have led to her death. I mean, if it wasn't for her getting lucky, she would have died multiple times. We come full circle to the problem with this. The problem I had with the trailer, the problem I have with the message, and how I reject it and say there is something better. If you can get over yourself, get over what you feel and think about yourself, you can live a much happier and fulfilling life. I'm not saying that everything that a man is called to do and a woman is called to do is inherently enjoyable. There's a lot of dirty work on both sides that thinking about it may not bring much pleasure, but the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And I think if we learn to step back and start seeing that my desire shouldn't trump my responsibility, I think we would find that at the end of our lives, we'd actually feel complete because we'd look around at the fruit of our labor and see not ourselves, not our own greatness, but the greatness that we helped to lift up. I always think about this scene at the end of one of my favorite games of all time, and I'll probably bring this up many, many times because it's essentially how I best summarize what I desire to live, what I, what I desire for my own life. In the game Bioshock, you can either go the evil route 
or the good route. I always go the good route whenever I play. And that is to save these little girls known as little sisters and rescue them from their captivity rather than exploit them. And at the end, you rise to the surface and those little sisters that you saved, you end up essentially adopting them and helping them to grow up. And the game ends, you, the protagonist, on your deathbed in the hands of those little sisters who are now grown up and have gained a life of their own. Some have gotten married, some went to school, and they all were able to actually grow and excel in their life. As you, this hand, this withered hand is dying, all those little sister hands start grabbing his and then the credits roll, signifying that you went into this world, you came out with something great and you helped to raise this generation and all those women saw you as their father and were there as you left this world. That to me is what I desire with my own life. And that's how I summarize what I desire to accomplish. And I think that's one of the greatest endings to a story, in my opinion. But then when you see a movie like Prey, and the movie ends with Naru being elevated as war chief, you don't see that she accomplished anything for the tribe, just for herself. All these men are dead. I mean, I was kind of looking through the closing scene, and I don't think I saw a man, any man. I think all I saw was women. And it's actually, the movie's actually kind of a tragedy. Now the tribe chief has got to get to work repopulating this tribe. So maybe it was a win for him. So why did I not like this movie because it was expected that I should. And so we come to the end and I thank you for the time that you've given me. I hope I was able to thoroughly explain what I didn't like about this movie. I was hoping that I'd be wrong, but it seems like sadly I was not. And I appreciate you getting this far into the video. I have been your host, The Reasonable Normie. And if you enjoyed your time, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment if you have any thoughts below. I'd love to engage with anyone's thoughts and see where they might agree or disagree and keep going from there. Be sure to check out any of my other videos and I'll see you in the next one. For all that is good and true, you guys be good.